Hello, this is Scott. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm going back to the basics. I'm actually starting a new series, uh, Statistics in R. And so uh, hopefully you're, you've joined me before on this series. But today we're going to be talking about basic histograms and density plots in, in R. So I did covered sampling, some basic methods for, for sampling. Um, and in last time, and one of the things that we did is we created uh, a sample from an R, from excuse me, a normal distribution. So, uh, and and the command looks something like this, where I'm sampling for 100 observations from a sta what's called a standard normal. It has mean zero and standard deviation one. So if I do that. And then I look at this sample that I just created. This is what the, the sample looks like in, in our studio. So now we want to plot some of this information. We did a very simple plot before. We did um, the most basic plot. But now let's look at, I'm doing, a, say, a histogram in R. So I just hist, whoops, where did my cursor go? Um, hist Y. And if I do that, I create this basic plot here. Um, and if I want to see help on this particular uh, function, hist, I can just do this. And then R returns all the different options that I can do with this particular um, function. So one of the things that I can do is I can use this freak um, parameter. So I'm going to go use that this time. So I'm going to say hist. And then I'm going to say y. And then I'm going to say freak, this is frequency, equals false. And like that. And then if I run this, control enter, and uh, execute that, then I get this, this histogram. But notice now this is scaled, right? So this is the actual frequency. So these are about, these two um, rectangles are about 30% a piece versus what we did before, this is the, on the y-axis, this is actually the level of y, and now we have the, the frequency here. Um, and since I'm using standard normal, it's pretty close, but it certainly doesn't have to be. Um, one of the other things that I could do, and we did this last time, we said just plot y, right? And so if I do that, I get, um, and this is ordered observations from my sample, and I get something look, that looks like this. Um, if I want to, let's look at the density function. So if I help, go help density, then I get this kernel density estimation. So I could actually um, use this in this plot command together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say hist, and then instead of plotting the y values, I'm actually going to create the density and of y and then execute that whoops uh let's see help density of y i don't know oh um i want to use plot not hist and then we get this right here so this is a smooth kernel density estimate for our data that we um, sampled from the normal distribution and then the last thing that we can do is um, if I do this, let me show you shorthand. If I do this hist of y, oops, y, and then freak, I can do shorthand, right? I don't have to type out frequency. I can hit freak, freak equal f for shorthand, and that's what I get. But this time I can overlie, overlie, overlay, excuse me this density on top of it. So essentially I'm using the same command, but now I'm overlaying the density on top of the actual plot. So that's kind of useful itself. Um, just to let you know, just a little hint here, if I wanted to, I could create those certainly on the same line. All I would do is I would separate those with a, um, a semicolon and then execute, and it would execute those two. It executed both of those at the same time. So I've got actually two plots of the same thing. Lastly, let's look at stem. So stem of y, 
this is a stem and leaf plot. So what this does is it creates, so I'm running from uh, minus three to three. This is standard normal distribution, right? Three, so 95% of my values are gonna become plus or minus three um, standard deviations, actually 99.54% of the observations within three standard deviations, 95% within two standard deviations, uh, for this nor normal plot. And then if I go help, we can look at the different options for this stem. And one of the things that you can create, if you have a really large data set, you can use this scale parameter, which essentially will separate the data. So um, if I have, if I want to separate that, I could actually say stem, whoops, I could actually say stem and then Y and then if I said scale, well, if I say scale equal one, that's gonna be the same plot that we just created. Uh, and then if I say, if I run this again with say scale equal to 10, then what it does is it separates these out. So if, if you have a really large um, distribution, you wanna kinda of wanna flatten it, flatten the curve, then this is the one, thing that you can do. All right, hopefully that was useful. Next time we're going to talk about central tendencies and measures of variation. I'm going to keep these short and uh, pithy, and I'm going to just do a lot of these. I'm going to cover very focused topics in each one, and I hope you can join me again. I will do more advanced plots down the line. In fact, I have a series on multivariate and loudest extra plots for advanced users, and you might want to check that out. It's, it's in one of my playlists. Thanks.